July 1970, two American congressmen are among a delegation that's visiting Khon Song Prison in South Vietnam. They're getting the guided tour when one of the Americans pulls out a hand-drawn map a former prisoner had given him. The map shows a secret part of the prison. That's where they want to go. As they open a door, they begin to hear a chorus of moans. People are crying out for what the Americans are told is water. As they walk farther into the room, what they see they can't believe. Women and men trapped in cages, some beaten, mutilated, their bodies covered in sores. The translator looks at one of the congressmen and says, Tiger Cage. The two congressmen were Augustus Hawkins and William Anderson. They were accompanied by the USAID Office of Public Safety Director Frank Walton, as well as Tom Harkin, who would later serve on the United States Senate. Their translator and assistant for the day was Don Luce, a man that would soon relinquish his support for the American war effort. He has a controversial story to tell, but we'll save that until the end. The Vietnam War was in full swing, that's why in those cages were people considered the enemy of the US and Republic of Vietnam. The delegation didn't fully understand the ongoing atrocities committed in the prison and, as you'll soon see, other prisons. That day, Tom Harkin took the photos which were later published in Life magazine article titled The Tiger Cages of Con Son. The article appalled many people in the US, folks who had no idea that such inhumane treatment of prisoners was happening in South Vietnam. They became even more appalled later when released prisoners talked about what had happened to them. But first, let's talk more about what the delegation saw that day. This part of the prison that was not on the guided tour was the punishment block. It was a room with about 120 cells. These weren't ordinary cells, though. They were basically pits in the ground, each with an iron grid for a ceiling. That made it possible for guards to walk over the cells and look inside. Perhaps now and again throw some food down there, or worse. Many of them were open to the sunlight all day, and in Vietnam that sun can be pretty damn strong. These cells were mockingly nicknamed the sunbathe cells. Anyone who's ever been foolish enough to sit under the tropical sun from dawn until dusk will know what damage that can cause. We should say here that these cells weren't the creation of the Vietnamese. The French first made the tiger cells when they were in Vietnam, doing all the terrible things colonists tend to do from time to time. The Americans described the cells as being around 5 feet wide, 6 feet long, and 6 feet deep. That wasn't much space when there were usually 6 or 7 prisoners wallowing down there. We don't need to tell you that the cells weren't fitted with modern conveniences, so the stench from human waste was unbearable. As for who was down there, it included anyone accused of being communists. Sometimes families were imprisoned, other times student activists were rounded up and sent to the prison, sometimes spending years down there without ever having a trial. Let's now talk about torture. The tiger cells, as we said, were a punishment block, but they weren't always just punishment punishment in themselves. Rather, they were a holding house. One former prisoner said he was beaten and tortured on and off for a whole year. He said at times he'd have soapy water forced into his mouth and eyes. He said other times he was electrocuted. On other occasions, he was beaten with sticks until he said he vomited blood or until the blood came out of my eyes or ears. Another former inmate described having his hands handcuffed behind his back and then being suspended by his arms from the ceiling. That caused incredible pain and usually resulted in him blacking out. In his own words, he said, They chained our feet and attached the chains to a pole. There were between 50 and 100 prisoners. We had nothing to lie on and it was filthy and dirty and cold. Every day they would open the door and send in a bunch of common criminals who would beat us with sticks and kick us. He said he saw several people die in the tiger cages. Others lost the use of their limbs, with one man saying he and many others were disabled after the beatings. He said we were still sick and needed more time to recover. We told them many of us still could not walk, and many were still very sick. And then he dropped this bombshell. He said the older tiger cages were being replaced by new ones, with the new torture cells paid for by the US and built by an American contractor. That contractor we discovered after some research was the construction consortium Raymond, Morrison, Knudsen, Brown, Root, and Jones. The deal was worth $400,000 and was paid for by the US military. It's about $2.7 million in today's money, a mere speck in the vast and costly tapestry of war. These new cages were smaller, so only one prisoner stayed in them at a time, but this created another kind of evil. The guards would open the iron grills and jump in with the prisoner, beating him senseless. The prisoners were so weak they couldn't fight. Each day, they were only given enough water to barely survive. Food-wise, they were given two spoons of rice. That's hardly enough calories to sustain human life. That same prisoner said they received more beatings because we asked for more food and more water. He said a man named Lee Von An was beaten to death, and so was a Buddhist monk. When investigations into the torture and deaths happened later, 
Later, all the prisoners told the same story. One of them said, each of us went through a similar ordeal. It's hard to say just how many political prisoners were held on both sides of the war. The Saigon government said the number was 5,000, but the New York Times in 1973 said it was more like 20 to 30,000, with some estimates being as high as 200,000. These were secretive times indeed, but those released from the prison stood up later and described in horrific detail what had happened to them. The Times published an article on July 11, 1970 with the headline, Saigon is investigating tiger cage cells at prison. Partway down the story is this paragraph, the government has already confirmed that the small, crowded tiger cage cells exist and that they contain around 400 prisoners who refuse to obey the prison authorities. It said the prisoners were shackled, beaten, and did not receive enough food or water to sustain anything near good health. When the South Vietnamese government was asked about this, it responded by saying prisoners in those cages had not saluted the national flag. But from what we can see, there was some amount of sadism going on in those wretched punishment blocks. Indeed, after three students from Saigon University were released from the prison, they said the government had not been telling the truth. They said they believed the number of prisoners was way higher than the government had said, stating that the number was 11,200. Speaking on behalf of those students was a man named Cao Win Loy. He said he'd spent 13 months in a tiger cage for nothing more than joining a peace protest. Women got the same treatment as men. Here's one testimony from a former female prisoner. In prison, sometimes they made my sister or me witness the torture of the other. When I saw them beat my sister, it was very painful. They put us in the tiger cages, and when I came to my senses, I thought I fell into hell because the cage was the shape of a coffin. There is a kind of happy ending to her story, though. She also said she was released. She wrote, the happiness made tears pour down. I couldn't walk. I was paralyzed. I was cured in months after, but at the time of my liberations, my legs were still very weak. As for other kinds of tiger cages, you can look no further than Phu Quoc Prison. It housed mostly Viet Cong and North Vietnamese soldiers, some of whom held a high rank. Today, the prison is a museum that shows how conditions were back then, replete with tiger cages. These cages were no hole in the ground, and they certainly weren't large enough for a bunch of guards to get in there and commit themselves to an orgy of violence. They must, however, have been an awful way to spend your time, under the sun all day at the mercy of a guard's sticks, biting ants, snakes, and likely the occasional giant centipede. Today, you can visit the prison website which shows one man-like doll in a tiger cage who looks like he's supposed to be dead. If he's not, he's missing half a leg and is covered in cuts and bruises. Below the photo is the text. At the time, thousands of prisoners died in the prison because they couldn't stand tortures. In quite disturbing detail, the website talks about punishments that happened outside of the tiger cages. It shows one prisoner being blinded by high-powered lights. Another picture shows a guard popping out a man's teeth with a stick. If that isn't bad enough, another prisoner is wrapped in a sack and is being placed on a large heated pan. This kind of thing never happened in the US, or at least we don't think it did, but listen to what an academic wrote about those days in Vietnam. In a paper published by the University of California Press, he wrote, The Republic of Vietnam, or South Vietnam, operated this prison under the close advisement of the United States. In fact, this prison was part of the mass incarceration system that Vietnam built in the 1960s with the help of U.S. law enforcement experts and funding from the CIA. The writer also says, Guards would walk above the cages and throw quicklime over everyone. Prolonged exposure to quicklime causes burns, and the people in these cells had no water to wash with. The academic also adds something to the story regarding when the U.S. delegation went there. He said that everyone who'd arrived from the U.S. was appalled by what they saw. Nevertheless, he said the delegation minimized the conditions in their official report. As some of you know, much of the USA was against the war in Vietnam. Photos of inhumane conditions in prisons only supported their cause and turned more people off the war. That's why the officials kept most of the horrors hush-hush. The writer said that Tom Harkin wasn't supposed to publish those photos, but he leaked them to Life magazine. After that leak, protests in the U.S. exploded. In Boston, activists made mock tiger cages and stayed in them all week. Even in London, people made cages and sat in them outside of the offices of a contractor that built the detention facilities. We told you we'd come back to that translator named Don Luce. Many years later, he wrote that he had a friend who had been tortured to death, but he said the torture happened under the eyes of American soldiers. He said the U.S. paid the salaries of the torturers, taught them new methods, and turned suspects over to the police. The U.S. authorities were all aware of the torture. After he turned against the war effort, he lost his press pass. He became a pariah to the U.S. and the South Vietnamese. One day, a friend of his from military intelligence said, Don, you've got to be more careful. They're out to get you. This became a reality when he discovered a deadly two-step snake had been planted in his bed one day. He was eventually expelled from Vietnam and had to return to the U.S. A female prisoner named Thieu Thi Tao later wrote that she actually got to speak with the delegation that day. She was a 16-year-old student at the time. This is what she said about her experience. I still remember the strange foreign voices in the 
cages, we wondered what new indignities were to be visited upon us. But a foreigner myself who spoke Vietnamese with a heavy accent told us it was a US congressional investigation. We had prayed for such an inquiry and took the chance to speak of the tortures. We begged for water and food. We were dying, you know. After the Life magazine expose, Congressman Philip Crane went to the prison to see what was up. His remarks have since been called racist, and he obviously either lied or wasn't shown something similar to what had been happening before. He said the tiger cages are cleaner than the average Vietnamese home. This didn't convince the activists, of course. We'll finish with a quote that Don Luce liked to say at times, in reference to the war. It's from the poetry of the Vietnamese Buddhist monk Thich Nhat Hanh. Remember, brother, remember, man is not our enemy. Now, you need to watch 50 insane facts about Vietnam War you didn't know, or have a look at this.